Okay, we're going to get started this evening. Uh, tonight, the topic's going to be candlesticks. We're just going to kind of briefly go over them. We've done a video on them before, so I'm not going to go in depth. Um, Wednesday, chat's going to be uh, about the mindset of a trader. So look forward to that coming up. But we're going to take a look at my opinion on individual candlesticks. Look at a lot of examples. And uh, maybe a couple new patterns that we haven't talked in depth about lately. So here is a scale of bullish candlesticks, individual candlesticks. So obviously your momentum candle on the left gets a 10. That's probably the most bullish you'll see. And then it kind of scales down from there. The hammer candle, normal candles, got little wicks on the top and the bottom. Spinning top, the inverted hammer, and the doji. And, um, and you could go and research these and find different names and different everything else, but that's what I'm going with. On the bear side, same thing. Momentum candle is going to be the top 10 on the scale of most bullish candlestick. Then shooting star, again, a normal bearish candlestick, the spinning top, the hanging man, and again, the doji. And the doji just basically says, yeah, we agree right now. So a little refresher, like I said, there's a, we have an in-depth video on candlesticks already. Just remember, it's more important about where these candlesticks forms over that they even form at all. And we'll get into that a little bit. And the candlestick patterns do give us information. But let's not get narrow focused on what candle is forming. We got to keep the bigger picture in mind. Uh, my personal opinion is that candlesticks by themselves well, not too accurate. They're probably more accurate when combined to make a pattern. And even then, we need to add the whole family together to get a good picture. So let's talk about the prince and princess of this royal family. So we know price action is king. We know volume is queen. So the prince is going to be support and resistance. And the princess is going to be the 20 year period MA. So first, why the 20? And basically it's because the 20 works most accurately across all time frames. There's a book in the library. It's called uh, Moving Averages 101. If you want to look into that, it gives you some of the most popular common moving averages and uh, it mentions in there that the 20 works pretty good across all of them. It's the most dependable. So if I was just going to use just one, which we are in these examples, I'm going to use the 20. Um, it's always worked for me this way. Your mileage may vary, but that's why I use the 20 with just the price action. Your most common moving averages are the 20, 50, 100, and 200. You should know those because if everybody's using them, we need to know what they are. If you're more into Fibonacci's, 21, 50, 500, and 200 are the Fibonacci you made. But it just boils down to you know, if everybody's looking at the 20 and the 50, for example, we should look at the 20 and 50. Because if everybody's making a decision on that, then we got to know where those are at as well. To me, chart reading hierarchy first is always price action. 
Second is going to be volume. Then where's our support and resistance? Then where's our 20 period moving average? Then are there any candlestick patterns? And then if we need something to tip the scales after all of that, then maybe an individual candlestick pattern. But let me show you what, what I mean. I'm going to switch screens here. So this is Friday's action. March 10th. So look up here at one. We're uptrending. We came up and double top right at a resistance area. And based on candle sticks, just sticks, is there any reason we see up here that we should have not set a higher low. I mean, we were uptrending. There's our lower low. I would have thought we would have bounced. Just kept going. So let's look right here at two, which is now lit up. We're under the MA. We just broke underneath this support, which is now turning into resistance. We're still not getting an individual candlestick pattern. That says we're still going down. You could argue this was a reverse handle, but that's one of the other problems I have with individual candlesticks is so subjective. Everybody's gonna look at them different. We can go to three. We come down here, we bounced support, it's hanging in there. We got no real individual candle that sticks out to us saying, oh, here's where we're gonna bounce. Here's a little different, you could argue. We did set our lower high. We do have a hanging man. So out of four times here, we have one time so far that we got some kind of candle that said, eh, maybe this was the bounce. And same thing down here. And we could keep going, but we're going to stop at number five. A yeah. little bit. I mean, this is actually, it's on the lower scale. But inverse hammer is slightly bullish. Candle. And then we just rolled over. So individually candle wise. Not so, so far so sure that they're helpful. I do like even reading the wicks. Up here you could say, look, we found a bunch of sellers and we dropped down. Makes a lot of sense. Here, we wicked. We got some sellers. We're at support. We dropped down. I mean, that resistance. We dropped down. Makes sense. but then it doesn't. So now we've dropped below the MA. We've hit support. We found a lot of sellers. Yet we went up. So I think, in my opinion, obviously we could argue this, debate this all day long probably, but I don't think individual candles sticks are great. For helping one way or the other. Not on a consistent basis.
Now let's throw some candlesticks together. So I'm talking about like a one or two legged pullback, the three or four bar play, the breakout. And of course, we got all the other patterns we're going to discuss later on. Some of them we already have, like double tops, double bottom, head and shoulders, reverse head and shoulders, triangles and channels. And those are coming up. So let's look at some of these. So the pullback setup. We've been doing this in this Discord since we've started. I'm not sure it would have been as popular as it, as it is now if I didn't give it a name and an indicator. But I've always told you it's based on price action. So now we're going to look at the whys behind why the Genesis plays works with the levels we've set up. But I know there's a few of y'all in here that are in here tonight that trade the Genesis Blade, draw the fibs, draw your lines, draw everything. It is 100% based on pure price action. So we're going to get rid of these numbers. We'll switch it down to the one minute. Now let's look at some of these. So we're going to start on A. And this was Friday morning. Now most of us, some of us don't, but wait to see a little structure in the morning. You know, I like to wait about 15 minutes to see which way is everything is going. But let's look at this Friday morning. We drop. This was our first pullback. This is our first Genesis. But let's look at it as just price action. We're under the MA. We are now under support. That is now resistance. And we're looking for the first candle to close under these pullback candles. So under this one here. So this was our first indication. This is our first candle breakdown. Our entry would have been this candle right here. And then our target would have been down here. And our stop would have been this candle right here. The break candle. If you'd have hit this somewhere in this pullback area to here, you got about a dollar move. Depending on when you may have gotten it. The important part of this to recognize is that this happened right at a support level. Because let's move down to B. Same setup, except in the opposite direction. Well, before we step back, if we looked at this, you could see on these two pullback candles, we had less volume, equal volume. And then you can see the volume picking up as we came down. The selling volume was picking up. So that was another confirmation. So let's look at B. We double bottom. You could have done the same thing. But this one, I would not have took, not even looked at. And I can tell you lots of reasons why. But the first one is we are not at a support or resistance level. So that was number one.
the volume kind of high. We're still below MA. So I'm not interested in this a lot. And then what do I always tell you about price action? We just set a lower low. There's three things that can happen. We could set a lower high and roll over. We could come up here and double top and roll over. We could set the higher high. We got a lot of room for reversal here. But let's look at C. C is a little different. We have some volume up now. Look at these two pull the volume on these two pullback candles. Almost half the volume. No interest. And coming back down as far as volume is concerned. We broke the previous candle. If you want to count bodies, we retested. This is your entry candle. We're still above the the EMA. And we're still using our support and resistance as targets. If you want to be conservative and say, you know what, I'm going to wait for it to break all the way, wick and all, then this was the candle we broke on. We still retested. This is your entry candle. And you still ran up here and almost got a dollar where well, you got a dollar move. Same Genesis play. You just could do it using price action. Same thing over here moving down. Again, we have a little bit of a candlestick telling us that we're going to turn here and they were getting smaller. Candlesticks do tend to get smaller as they approach support or resistance. So we did get a little bit of a clue that we were going to bounce here. Which shouldn't have been a surprise. The surprise was we didn't set. We didn't continue. This was a reversal. So here we're at D. I'm looking at the same thing. Yes. We closed below. Well, we broke below. But I'm not taking this one. We're above the MAs. And... We're uptrending. I'm looking for a higher low, even now. I'm looking for it to stay above here. We finally broke. So this time we pulled up. We're below the MAs. We are downtrending now. This candle broke. The previous candle. This would be our entry candle. This would be our target, but looking left, we should understand that this could be a hang up. It wasn't in this particular case, but you at least want to recognize it. Our stop above this candle here. Or you could use this one. Whichever one you felt more comfortable with. And then we finally did hit our target. So if you missed this one, we could look at F. This is the, another great pullback. Still have huge volume on the downside. But I would not have taken this one. I hope you can see the reason why. It's because this was our target. Just not enough. You know, it's a 30 cent move. Of course, at the time, we didn't know it was going to do this. So 
I wouldn't have took this because of the possible bounce right here. <coughs> Looking left, we bounced it before. It was strong resistance. Without seeing all this live, you'd have been smart to figure we were going to bounce this again. But when we didn't, we broke through it. We got G, still under the MAs. Now we're under this support, turning into resistance. There's the break. There's your entry candle, and there's your target. Same Genesis play over and over again, except just using price action. That's all we're using. I want to switch back real quick. And go over something we've talked about in here, the three and four bar play. It's basically the three bar play, but there is a four bar one. These are the rules from the expert, Jared Wesley. He's the first person I learned the three bar play from. Uh, according from, from his mouth, he's the one that came up with this play. I don't know how true that is, but I'm giving him credit for it. This is his rules for the three bar play. So the first bar should be what he calls an igniting bar. So about double the average bar. And then if it's an igniting bar with increased volume, that's a plus. The second bar and third, if it's a four bar play, should stay within the upper 50% of the first bar and have relative equal highs. The entry bar is the third bar or fourth if it's four bar play. You're going to see examples of both. When it closes above or below the preceding bar. The color of the second or third bar doesn't matter. Let's take a couple looks at these. So here's the first one. Here's your, what some people would call a four bar play. And it works. but this does not meet any of the rules. Not a one. This is not an igniting bar. This is not any larger than any of the previous bars, much less twice as large. The second bar has not equal highs. Third bar, not equal highs. The only rule it does follow is, is, is within 50% of the first bar. So I know a lot of people before would call this a three bar or four bar play. And it just doesn't meet the requirements. But here is one. That does. Here's your igniting bar. Double the size of any of the previous bars. Here's your first bar of equal high within 50% of this bar. This is your entry candle after this breakout. Your stop, previous candle, and your target would be wherever your next target line would have been. But you can see that this worked out very well. 
This is after five minutes. Here. I'm hoping. Nope, I may have to find it. Nope, there it is. Four bar play. Took me a long time to find these, by the way. So there's your igniting bar. Twice as big as any of the previous bars. Relatively equal lows. It's bar two. This is bar three. This is your entry candle. Right here. This is your stop. Now this one did pull back on you. But then eventually fell. Like I said, this was a long time ago. So hopefully you had some kind of target down here. So that's what the three and the four ball play is supposed to look like. And then the last one we're going to look at is breakouts. <coughs> and we all know these, we've been doing these. We have a consolidation zone. We know the first breakout here is usually the fake breakout. We pulled right back up into this area. We stayed below the MA. The entry candle would have been this candle here after the real breakout. And then your target should have been somewhere in this area. I said I had to go back to find these so I don't have targets written for everything. So what I'm hoping we get out of this is that, you know, it's all nice to have like the Genesis play, but you really don't need them. It's all based on price action. The patterns that we have, first breakout, second breakout, all based on price action. You could look at volume. Look at the first breakout when it broke out here. Look at the volume was terrible. There's actually less breakout, less volume on these two candles than it was on this one. So we come back and then big volume again. Just as much volume as this one had, but a lot bigger bar. So a lot more selling. Feel comfortable getting in on here and following it down to your target. And just running with the same theme that we've been running with. If you can understand these concepts, watching just price action, watching just volume, now support and resistance, MAs we've added in, then it makes your strategy no matter what it's based on, what indicator or whatever you might be using, a lot easier to understand. And that's what I'm hoping to get through because we're going to start adding in stuff, especially the RVSI next next time. We're going to start adding in patterns. Um, and start growing this bigger and bigger. But this is the basics that you really need to grasp you know, in, in order to take the next step, in order to know, look, this is my strategy. It seems to work, but does your strategy finding trend? Is your strategy with the trend? You know, does your, your trade plan actually make sense based on price action? You've got to understand all this part before we can start throwing in the nine and the crosses and everything else. Which, like I said, which is coming up. So hopefully these last three Sundays, we got a real good understanding of just the basics. Maybe it's the boring stuff to some, but 
I really think this is the great foundation you have to have to grow from here. And that's what we're going to start doing next. We're going to start growing. We're going to start throwing in patterns. We're going to start throwing in other MAs. For those that want them, we're going to throw in the RVSI because it's my favorite. And start building all, building up from here. This is the foundation, so now it's time to start building up, get into bigger concepts. And there's a lot more than this coming, just based on price action. That uh, I think you'll find interesting when we start looking at bigger time frames, and then looking back from bigger time frames, and how that price action on the higher time frames can kind of predict what we're doing day trading. So hope you enjoyed it. We got any questions? I am here to ask away.